Hello, and welcome to the first in this series of Django screencasts called Django from the Ground Up. This series of screencasts will go starting from nothing all the way through setting up your models, your views, and your templates, and finally to deploying onto a production server, and everything that comes in between, everything necessary for creating a complete Django web application. The main audience for this series of screencasts is someone who's just past the beginner stage, but maybe not quite to the intermediate stage. Obviously, if you are a more advanced user of Django, you might find things that are interesting and, and you might learn a few things here and there. And if you're a less ad advanced user of Django, maybe you're just a beginner, you might have to rewind, play back, and refer back to the documentation, but I think you'll be able to probably follow along. Now first, let's talk about the site StartTheDark.com. The idea behind it is that you'll be able to quickly and easily let your friends know what you will be doing tonight. And so that it won't turn into a Twitter-like thing, you can only have one item that you post per night. You can update that and make it different, but you can attend many different uh, events. To attend an event, simply click on the plus sign right next to the event. And to unattend, click on the check to turn it back into a plus. Uh, right now we're looking at the Tonight view, but we can go into an Archive view and look at other things that have occurred into the past. So we see that we see what our friends are doing today. We can see what they were doing on September 13th or September 10th, 9th, 8th, 7th, etc. Also we can look at what everyone's doing tonight. It looks like somebody who's not my friend, ASDF, is attending a Django Sprint. Maybe I'd like to go to that. If I say that I'm going to go to it and I go back to my Tonight page, that then shows up even though they're not my friend. I can also check what every check out what everybody's done in the archives. So even if they're not my friends, I can see what they were doing. I can add find and add new friends simply by searching through the uh through the index. And I can simply hit unfollow if I've already been following them, or I can follow them if I'm not. By clicking on the latest users, I can see everybody who's recently signed up for the site. And again, I can follow or I can unfollow. Clicking on the clear button will get rid of any notifications that I don't want to see. I can also take a look and see who I'm following, who's following me, and people who follow me, and I follow them both. Clicking on a user will show not only who they follow, who follows them, and mutual followers, but it'll also show the last 10 events that they created and attended. To enter a new event, all you have to do is type it in here, and unfortunately, due to the fact that I have to shrink the, the browser down for the screencast, it's, it became very buggy, but I'll show you what you have to do. You type in uh, event at my place. Like I say, unfortunately it became very buggy to to shrinking that down the browser. Um, but you just simply hit enter and it and it turns into the event that you see right here. Now this site is already available online at startthedark.com. And if you go to the bottom of startthedark.com and you click on open source, you'll find a link to uh, a GitHub repository which has the complete source code already uh, created and ready for you to download and, and set up yourself. There's also an issue tracker that you can check out as well. So without further ado, let's set up revision version control with Git. Now if you'll notice here, I have two sessions open. The tab on the left is a simple terminal session on my local computer, and the tab on the right is an SSH connection to a local Ubuntu box. Um, I'm running it in a virtual machine so that we have a complete fresh start, uh, but you can be running on a virtual machine or on a server or whatever. Uh, and if you'll notice, there's nothing in the directory currently. Uh, I'm just sitting in my home directory. Uh, I have to mention one thing I have installed is Git already on this machine because I know we'll be using it. Uh, now you don't need to use Git and you don't need to use Ubuntu, uh, but since I'm familiar with them, those would all be those are what I'll be using. Obviously, you can follow along in whatever you'd like. 
So the first thing I want to do to get this whole process started is to start a folder where we can store stuff in, in version control. So I'm going to do make dir start the dark. Uh, and then I'm going to change that directory and I'm going to do a command called git init db. Now that creates an empty git repository, but right now we can't really do anything with it because there's nothing inside of it. Unfortunately, git needs to have some content to work with before you can get started. So I'm going to create a readme file. Uh, and in there, I'm going to just make some dummy text. Now you have to put some text in here because git can't handle empty files very well due to the, just the, completely the way it works. So I'm not going to type anything out major right now. I'm just going to type out stay tuned. And hopefully that will entice people to stay tuned to this project. Uh, now we're going to do git status and see what's up. It looks like there's an untracked file called readme.txt. So we're going to do git add. And that actually git add dot adds everything in the current directory. So if we look at git status again, uh, it looks like there's a ch one change to be committed, and that's a new file called readme.txt. That's exactly what we want. Commit message called initial commit. Then we go into our local branch, and I'm in a directory uh, called uh, Eric Flow Development Python. This is my normal standard development directory, and if if you haven't watched my other screencast called setting up a development environment for Django or setting up a Django development environment whatever if you haven't seen that uh, I would highly suggest you go check that out so that you understand how I have this all set up if not you're not at a huge disadvantage but you might get confused as to how things are being accessed and everything so the next thing I want to do is check out that repository on the local machine so we're going to do git clone ssh and then this server just happens to be at 10.211.55.4 and then if we remember it was in home eric flow uh, start burr, the dark and we're going to actually check it out into a folder called start the dark temp uh, you'll see why we need to do that in a second and if you go to start the dark dot temp and ls you'll see that there's a readme.txt in there which is exactly what we had on the server uh, now the next thing we're going to do is start a Django project and we're going to start that project in start the dark with no temp so we're going to do Django admin start project and then start the dark too many starts in that anyways so now that we've got that we see that we have both start the dark and start the dark temp and in start the dark we have several files. There's init.py, manage.py, settings.py, and urls.py. These are all standard, you know, bare bones project uh, files. So we're going to move all those files uh, star to start the dark temp. And then we can get rid of that folder, start the dark, and we're going to move start the dark temp to start the dark. So if you didn't catch what I just did, is uh, Django can't create a project if there's already a folder of the same name in there. So we had to create a temporary folder where we checked out the repository. Then we created a folder called start, the, or we created a project called Start the Dark. Copied the files into the temp folder. Got rid of the Django project, and then finally m renamed that temporary folder to the correct folder. So now all we've got is this one Start the Dark folder and git status will show us that we have these four files in there that haven't been added so we're gonna do that right now git commit uh, we don't need the a so we're just gonna commit with a message called created the first part of the project Mert. gotta control these typos here in a demo and now what we can do is we can go git push that will actually push back onto the server the project. Now it's not going to show up yet, so what I'll need to do is I'll need to do a git reset hard. And you see that we have the latest commit message now, and if we do an ls, we see all the files. Now we're usually not going to be doing a git reset hard. That's just so I could 
sort of demonstrate the fact that it actually worked. Um, but we're going to mainly use this folder here as sort of a dumb data store and check out from different locations and push back to it in other locations. Um, uh, but if you ever want to, you can always do a git reset hard and, and make sure that it's, that it's the latest revision. So one thing that's going to kind of trip us up as we get going here is that we're going to get all these different PYC files and we're going to get tons of uh, of these files that we really don't want to check into version control. Uh, every project has a different set of files like this. Every uh, operating system generates different uh, files we don't care about. Uh, so what I'm going to do is create a file called git ignore. And the first thing I really care about is star.pyc. I hate those PYC files get checked in. Uh, and the next thing we're going to do is add dev.db. Because I almost always make my development SQLite, SQLite database called dev.db. And we don't want to check in the SQLite database. Uh, so what we'll do now is we will git add.gitignore, git commit. And we are going to call added ignore rules. So now that we're set up with version control, we can get set with creating our apps and starting to build out our project. Uh, the next step in this screencast series is going to be uh, dealing with creating a, the, our first application and the models within that application.